A fundamental mathematical operator that is supported by any mainstream programming language is the remainder operator and of course JavaScript is no different. It has a number of practical use cases, some of which you might not have thought of and that is exactly what we will look at in this lesson. So let's go. Now let's get the obvious thing out of the way. Given two numbers, the remainder operator that is indicated by this person character gives us the remainder when we divide the first number by the second number. Of course, in this example, when we divide 3 by 2, we get a remainder of 1 and that is exactly what is returned. If we have a perfect divisor, for example, 4 is a multiple of 2, we get a remainder of 0. Here are some more simple examples with 3 as a divisor. When we try to divide 4, we get a remainder of 1. With 5, we get a remainder of 2. And with 6, of course, we get a remainder of 0. Now notice that I said numbers and not integers because numbers within JavaScript are all floating point which means that you can use fractions just like integers and you would get exactly what you would expect. For example, the remainder of dividing 4.25 with 1.5 is 1.25 which is what is left after 3 is removed from 4.25. Now perhaps the most famous use case of using the remainder operator is the isEven function. It simply returns true if the input value is even otherwise it returns false. And the definition of evenness, if you divide it by 2, you should get a remainder of 0. And of course, here are some examples which are exactly what you would expect. 0 is even, 1 is false, 2 is even, 3 is false, you get the idea. And arguably the most famous coding interview question known as FizzBuzz also uses divisibility and I already have a lesson dedicated to that that I will leave in the video description. But talking about divisibility, another way to use that is with a loop variable. For example, within a loop from 0 to 100, we can carry out an action every 9th time by simply checking if the remainder when the value is divided by 9 is equal to 0. And of course, if we simply log the value of x, it's going to be 0, 9, 18, 27 and so on, which is the table of 9. You can take the same nature of divisibility and convert it into a utility function that gives you the nth items from any given input array. We take an input array, take the value of nth, which are the nth items that we want to collect, and then from the array filter out only the items that have their index which is divisible by nth. So as an example when we give it an array 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and get every third item we get 0, 3, 6 and 9. Now the next use case I have fond memories of because this was a part of a computer science assignment and we had to figure this out without having been explicitly told that this was a well-defined use case of using the remainder operator and that is taking large groups of smaller units and putting them into bigger aggregates. Now you can do this with any unit, for example with currencies you can roll them up into millions, billions and trillions, but we are going to be using time and we are going to roll it into hours, minutes and seconds. And we are going to create this function called make time, which is something that you should do for yourself to ensure that you have a healthy mindset. This function takes a large number of seconds and then rolls it into hour, minute and second. Now 1 hour contains 3600 seconds which is simply 60 times 60. So to get the number of hours we divide the seconds by 3600 and we don't care about the remainder as that will get rolled into minute and second. So we use math.flow to get rid of the fractional value. Now 1 minute contains 60 seconds. So to get the total number of minutes contained within the seconds value we divide it by 60. Get rid of the fractional value as that is something that belongs in second by using math.flow. And then get the remainder of the total number of minutes with 60 because all of the minutes that are above 60 are essentially already taken care of by the R value. And then for the second we only want the remainder of 60 because any seconds that are more than 60 are already rolled up into minute and R. If we test this function with a simple toy example of 3666 we get 1 R which is 3600 and then the remaining 66 seconds gets rolled into 1 minute with the final remainder of 6 seconds. I'll wrap things up there, hopefully you have a better appreciation of the JavaScript remainder operator and if you're interested in more JavaScript tips and tricks, I have lots of them on this channel and for example, here's the lesson where we look at object destructuring. Thank you for joining me, smash that like and subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next one.